Hey, welcome back. Last time we looked at two special kinds of loops of length k. One was the circuit loop with all up moves preceding all down moves. The other was the high loop whose bottom member is the largest of all loops. If the bottom member of the high loop is less than a billion billion, then we know that not just this loop, but every loop of length k involves some member less than a billion billion. So none of them are integer loops. So we wanna know what loop length k is the first one that admits even the possibility of an integer loop. That is, if there's a three n plus one loop out there somewhere, how long would it have to be? So let's calculate beta over two to the k minus three dx for the high loop. Remember, for the circuit loop, this sum of products of the powers of two and three amazingly simplified to three to the x minus two to the x. So what's the beta for the high loop? Well, that's more complicated because we spread the pieces out and then they straddle and then we slot them to the left. So the full expression for beta involves these crazy floor operations, which makes it hard to simplify the expression. How about we compute a beta directly on these straddled positions, like three to the sixth times two to the 1.6 and add all those up. We can call that beta prime. And that's actually an upper bound on beta for the high loop. Beta can't be bigger than that. And it's actually a pretty good approximation because by slotting everybody to the left, we cut beta prime at most in half, lowering each power of two. Uh, so beta is no worse than uh, beta prime over two. And on this chart, we can see the high loop betas for various loop lengths. This is a log of beta and they bounce around kind of randomly, but they stay pretty close to beta prime. And whoa, beta prime is really well behaved. Uh, it's a straight line in log space. So why is that? It's because beta prime simplifies uh, to three to the x times x over two. And that's also freaking amazing. Okay, now if we divide beta by 1361, or two to the k minus three to the x in general, then we get m, which is the lowest member of the high loop. And it's interesting. It's, it's basically only a factor of x higher than the m of the circuit loop. Okay, so beta prime here increases exponentially. That means we're gonna reach a loop length x where m exceeds a billion billion, uh, and we'll have the possibility of an integer loop. So can we solve for x? Well, we can solve for when beta prime exceeds a billion billion, but unfortunately we've also got this uh, annoying denominator to contend with. If it's large, that drives m down, and if it's small, it drives m up. And this denominator, as we've seen, is completely chaotic. So let's just go through all the loop lengths brute force one at a time. So take the high loop, solve for m, and here are the results from x equals one to 100. So all the loops where x equals 51 involve tiny numbers, but at x equals 41, the high loop's smallest member is uh, close to 2000. And the blue line says, as we increase x past x equals 41, the record for the highest loop is still 2000 until we hit 94, uh, where we find a loop involving numbers that are all greater than 5,000. Okay, and the main point of this chart is that certainly there are no loops smaller than length 100. I mean, if you're claiming to be a loop of integers, then all your loop members have to be bigger than a billion billion, right? Not just, you can't have somebody who's lower than 5,000. Okay, should we keep going past 100? Sure, sure. So here's x up to 100,000. So... By now we found a high loop with members uh, that, you know, where somebody is all, all the members are greater than 10 to the 10th, but somebody is 10 to the 10th. So it's a long loop with huge members, but it can't be an integer loop because the bottom of that loop around 10 to the 10th, we know that number goes to one. So we're looking for a loop whose member members are all bigger than a billion billion or 10 to the 18th. Okay, let's try x up to 10 million. 
This jagged line represents the record holders for the bottom members of the high loops. And nope, none of these can be integer loops because everybody's still got some member under 10 to the 60. Okay, that's why any 3n plus 1 loop has to have more than 10 million members. So don't go out there expecting to find a short 3n plus 1 loop. Uh, okay, how about these other lines on the chart? Well, the jagged line is kind of hard to characterize because that denominator is so chaotic. But thanks to the work of Alan Baker and other mathematicians, we can say a little bit about how high these high loops can go. So M has to be bigger than this, and M has to be smaller than this. And also, thanks to a theorem by Dirichlet, we know that M is going to be higher than this line an infinite number of times. It's already happening a few times here. So this is a far cry from proving what looks pretty obvious, which is that the highest high loops are generally around x squared. Like the highest loop near uh, length 1000 will have all of its members greater than a million. Okay, that was a good episode. See you next time.